Now to the cost of higher education. Tuition increases have a generation of students graduating with debt along with a degree. At the same time, state universities themselves are being financially squeezed, no longer mostly subsidized by the states they represent. And professors are being asked to take on larger classes and scrimp on baccalaureate programs. It is the case with Rutgers University, but Rutgers has Division I athletics. That department got $48 million last year. Joining us is Rutgers Associate Professor Charles Haberl. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. What does Rutgers prioritize now in terms of granting money, and what should it be prioritizing? Well, I'll tell you what they're not prioritizing, and that is what we colloquially refer to as instructional resources of the faculty. I've been in Rutgers eight years now, and I've seen a number of my senior colleagues retire, and during that time, their lines, which were good tenured lines have been converted into non-tenure track lines or even part-time lines being taught by contingent faculty. What does that do to the quality of education? Well, these faculty are forced to teach larger and larger classes, which means less individualized instruction for all the students that they're teaching. Uh, it also means that they're less willing to uh, compromise with the, their supervisors and also with the students. So they're very concerned about their instructional ratings from their students and they're, they need to cut corners. Don't all instruction, don't all students rate their professors? Uh, yes, they do all rate their professors. And you have said in an op-ed that it's causing um, the professors to be engaged in, an op in a popularity contest. Can That's you explain that? That's absolutely true, yes. Uh, basically what happens is if a professor assigns too much work, if a uh, professor develops a reputation of being especially demanding, well then students go to their RateMyProfessor.com and they say, I don't want to take a class with her, she's too demanding, I'm going to find someone who is more on my level. Really, do you feel as though the, has anyone in the, you're a chair of a department, has anyone uh, among your deans or chairs told you to dumb your classes down? Absolutely not. They've said, in fact, across the line, that's not what we're going to tell you to do. But the fact of the matter is, and my, uh, some of my deans who have worked with me on this have said, we have students coming in all the time and we advise them, take this course with this professor, that's what you need to do. The first thing the student will do is they'll look at their instructional ratings and say, whether or not this professor is a hard sell. But isn't it buzz around the campus as well? Pro students tell other students, this professor is so great, I learned so much. That counts too, right? A lot of it is word of mouth. Uh, it's not always easy, it's not always clear how this word of mouth develops, especially at a, an institution as large as Rutgers. Let's talk about the uh, prioritizing athletics versus academics, which is what we're talking about. Athletics, the argument goes, brings in an awful lot of money. So it should get money in order to make money. How do you counter that argument? Well, I absolutely think that athletics brings in a lot of money. It brings a lot of money in Texas. It brings in a lot of Oklahoma. It brings in a lot of money in Ohio. It does not bring quite as much money in New Jersey, unfortunately. In fact, what we're looking at is an athletics department that has a projected, uh, um, um, it has a projected loss of $184 million over the next 10 years. That's the administration's numbers, not mine. The administration has argued that most of their money goes to research. Is that true? And is that where it should be? Uh, which money? Are we talking about the students' tuition money or the money from the state? Or are we all talking of it. At, all of it. The largest single budget item is going to be salaries. It's going to be personnel. And an increasing amount of that money is being concentrated in the upper echelons of administration. We have 79 administrators who make over $275,000 a year. And uh, meanwhile, the level of the instructional faculty, the salaries are decreasing because a larger and larger number of them are being assigned part-time positions. Thank you for being with us, Charles Haberl. Thank you.